Okay, so I want to start this video by saying that I'm really sorry there hasn't been a video in some time. I've been dealing with hardware issues for a while, and the hard drive I've been using for years finally bit the dust. I lost all my projects, all my videos, all my graphics, and all my programs. I finally got everything back online now, and I'm able to put something substantial together. And with my return, I wanted a really special episode to come back with. So enjoy, and thank you for being so understanding. What can you say about Melina that hasn't already been said years over? She's one of the most iconic characters in the entire franchise, been around for longer than most, and her iconic gameplay has remained intact for all these years. It's no wonder she's one of the most requested characters in this video series, and it's finally time to cover what she could do on a competitive level. Whether it's the classics, 3D, or modern NRS era, Melina has remained a staple both casually and competitively, and has consistently remained a tough contender in high-level play. She's been a bit tricky to use historically, and I know there's a lot to be desired in her MK11 appearance for some people, but join me today as we uncover every single mainstream appearance of Melina in Mortal Kombat, and break down just how dangerous she tends to be. Melina shared her debut with the likes of Kitana and Jade in Mortal Kombat 2, released all the way back in 1993. Although her first ever appearance, she made one hell of an impact as she was at the very top of the tier list, sharing her top tier placement with someone like Jax. In tournament play, both Jax and Melina were both extremely popular, and for good reason. Melina, in particular, had a moveset that opened up variety and, in many ways, mobility. In a game that, to many people, feels a little bit slow and stiff, but that was just the gameplay before MK3. It was a slower, more patient experience, and she took full advantage of this. Melina shared her normals with the other female ninjas because the palette swaps of the 90s were just always like that. But it's the special moves that really set her apart from the other two, even though obviously Jade was a secret fight and not a fully fledged character in this one. Melina had three moves, all three of which were very good. Cytos was a straightforward projectile, but it had an interesting input here where High Punch had to be held for a short time, then released. Because this move can be done airborne, instant air size for screen control were effortless to perform because you simply hold the button down and then jump right before releasing it. This move controlled a lot of the screen, and being a hold input meant that if you had good timing, this Psy was often always ready to rock when you needed it. Airborne characters would struggle at getting in, and it was a fantastic zoning tool. Telekick is a more standard special input, where she simply disappears and then reappears in the air with a strike attack. This move was incredible at dealing with projectiles on reaction. You could catch someone if they just tried to jump, and although unsafe on block, still required a bit of knowledge on the opponent's end to get really good damage from that punish. The important thing about this was that the fear of Telekick made her scary to advance in on, which goes hand in hand with the Psy Toss. She had a lot of ways to keep you locked in place and simply afraid to move. Finally, her infamous Bull Roll, which is lightning fast here, and it gives her a juggle on hit. This move is so fast that it's really good for things like anti-air, repositioning, punishing things. It's just an all-round amazing attack. The thing about Melina in MK2 is that she does so many things well. Her damage is excellent, the utility of good projectiles, screen control, repositioning, punish potential. She pretty much has it all, and that's why when talking about competitive Mortal Kombat 2, Melina has pretty much always been right up in the top spots next to Jax. She's a devastatingly strong character here, and at first, while her special inputs might feel a bit strange to get used to, she is an all-round top contender. Now, with Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 adding all of the ninjas into the mix, this meant Melina came out to play once more. She was one of the hidden characters that you had to unlock via the Ultimate Combat Code, but even now seems to be one of the game's more obscure characters to a lot of players. She's definitely not bad in the eyes of modern players for Ultimate MK3, although a long time ago she was considered to be one of the weaker picks. Tier lists from years like 2012 had her as extremely low, whereas now she's been sitting a little bit higher into the mid-tier territories, whenever you watch a tier list of players competing today. 
Melina in this game is quite tricky and hard to play. She has fiddly inputs for some of her specials and strings, and in a game like MK3, which is really fast and aggressive, it can be a lot for somebody's hands to juggle. But this is about competitive play, right? Where people are able to take any input and make it work. So let's just ignore that talking point when discussing the rest of her. Melina has the exact same specials from MK2. Telekick, Ball Roll and Psy all return and they basically function the same way. It is the tools of Ultimate MK3 that allows her to do a little bit more with them. Psy zoning is still real and something that you can get going versus some of the cast. The little tricks like a deep jump kick into a late Psy release to maybe steal some extra damage if the opponent hesitates. That's there from MK2. There's not loads to go over with her projectile this time. It is still a hold input and it's still good. Instant air projectiles remain powerful and that's something that she can still perform. Telekick is arguably her weakest move in this game. It's a nice little combo ender after a ball roll, and it can still catch people off guard, but with the damage output of Ultimate MK3, especially with the top tiers, it's a risk you're going to be taking if you're not using it on reaction. This move can be a bit of a knowledge check because it does have a rather unique recovery animation. Sometimes players will get a bit confused looking for what punish they should do when blocking it, but that is more of a gimmicky lack of matchup knowledge thing. Ball roll in this game is very good indeed. This will launch for a combo. You can use it for anti-air, air-to-air if you hit a good jump kick, especially near the corner, and importantly, it's great at dealing with cross-ups. If someone jumps over you at an awkward angle, something that can be quite common in this game, roll will either anti-air someone for a combo, or it will simply just get you out of danger, because it covers the good distance. The distance you retreat to can resume side keep away and kind of reset the neutral, really. Combo strings are wonderful here. She can launch off of her Kickstarter, which blows up interruption attempts from your run jabs, so that's a very important tool. And the launch kick also applies from her bigger combo starter from High Punch if you're trying to punish something grounded. The damage of this full string into a jump kick Cytos is respectable as is, and against very specific characters, Melina can actually relaunch them too. But this mostly applies to people like Shiva and the Cyborgs, a universal weakness that Cyrax, Sector, and Smoke all suffer from. Importantly here, Melina has the female ninja normals, so Kitana and Jade. This means fantastic jabs for pressure and against Katana in particular, you share the same buttons outside of specials and strings, so Melina can once again hold her own a little bit. This is important because Katana is one of the game's strongest characters overall, so being able to fight some of the top tiers in even any way can be useful for a character that isn't top tier themselves. Melina's difficulty is something that would often hold a player back from trying her out, and she's still far from the best character in the game, but when you take a character that has the normals and hurt boxes of Katana, an already amazing character, different specials that can offer zoning potential, mobility, repositioning and punish potential thanks to roll and some fairly decent damage output because of the many ways she can convert into a combo, Melina is seen these days to be pretty good. The highest I've seen Melina so far is mid-tier, but even that is a far cry from the days I'd see Melina right at the bottom next to Shiva. She's kind of a specialist's character in my opinion because she does require a lot of work, but is one of those more enjoyable challenges that you can undertake if you want to spice things up and try something new. Worth noting, Melina is unchanged in Mortal Kombat Trilogy, so there's no reason to cover her installment there. <laughs> okay, it's time for Mortal Kombat Gold. Now, this game has always been the most obscure title of the mainstream games because it's often hard to research. Nobody really played it, especially when talking of high level, and trust me, that's saying a lot. However, Melina in this game is out of this world stupid. Gold often gets a reputation purely from Sector being one of the most bannable characters in the entire franchise, and that does tend to mean the other Gold exclusive characters get swept under the rug. I've said this before and I'll say it again, the new characters in Gold are for the most part all broken. And let me take you through Melina because it is genuinely hilarious what she can do here. She gets no new moves in Gold, 
Telekick, Ball Roll and Cytos are all back with the exact same inputs as the other games. Cytos has a pretty substantial charge time compared to Ultimate MK3, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be zoning people out as Melina in this game, you're going to be up close and personal. The reason for that is because of her Ball Roll. Now this is possibly the best this special move has ever been for a number of reasons. First, it is ridiculously fast. So fast that it works pretty much the same as Tanya's Drill Kick, which was said by many to be the most powerful special in vanilla MK4. Ball Roll can punish, air-to-air -air or anti-air the exact same way Tanya's Drill does, but in my opinion it's even better because of the reward it gives her. That reward is the easiest max damage combo you could possibly think of. The roll does very good damage standalone, and even though it does actually have a hit limit that will stop you being able to roll after a certain point, it doesn't matter if you started the combo with it, because 5 reps is more than enough to engage max damage. If this move hits you by itself, you are guaranteed to lose at least 40%, and that is just the way it is. On top of that though, MK Gold added the ability to choose your weapon before entering the match. So although Melina had this kind of rather generic sword as her weapon of choice, and it's certainly not terrible, you wouldn't really use it because it's the other weapons that can ascend her into broken territories. Give Melina the spiked club from MK4 and the screen splat attack after her ball roll loops will enter max damage and it will allow you to perform another roll before they can recover. Infinites in the MK4 style of game are all built around hitting max damage in such a way that you can attack the opponent before they've recovered what you've hit them with. And this wall splat into ball roll does just that for minimal effort. Telekick is great against the AI for some reason, but it doesn't combo on hit. The opponent can block after it connects, but it's still a fast, instant point blank tool, so it's good for that. Additionally, you can now do it in the air this time round. Melina in Mortal Kombat Gold is pretty much a supercharged Tanya. Tanya was a character that ruled the tier list in MK4 because of her drill kick, and Ball Roll is the same move but better. One single roll could potentially win the round depending on weapon choice, and remember, this roll works off an air-to-air -air jump kick, a deep jump kick, a whiff punish, or even a regular punish. The threat of this move is always there, but comparing Melina to the other top tiers and even the MK Gold specific characters who tend to be in a tier of their own, the roll can contest with a lot of them. If it didn't do so much damage, it wouldn't be as good. But seriously, if I ever even fought a Sector player in this game, if I could actually find people to play this game with, I would genuinely pick Melina for that matchup. One roll could trade rather favorably with powerful projectiles if you go underneath them. Every new character in gold is really, really powerful, and Melina is a perfect example of that. Ugh, this game is so ridiculous, man. From gold to deception, it would be some time until we saw Melina return, but with the most polished 3D title in Mortal Kombat Deception, this would be when we saw her again. She's still quite strong in this game. A bit simple, maybe, but what she can do works really well. Let's go over her toolkit. She has her side toss, ball roll, and telly kick once again, but the ball roll isn't something you'd use much this time round. It doesn't give her a lot besides a free throw because it's a back turn situation, but it's super unsafe. Telly kick on hit, especially near the wall, will grant a free throw as well. Seeing as the roll and telly kick give her the same reward in a throw, this one's just better all round because of its speed and the fact that it repositions full screen to point blank. You'd find yourself using this instead of roll because they have the same outcome, and this one's just more useful. Cytos is a generic projectile. Some 3D projectiles are good, this one's just okay. It's not a projectile game really, is 3D Mortal Kombat. But now it's the actual meat of the moveset. It always comes down to stances and the buttons that come alongside them. Her first hand-to-hand -hand is not very strong. It has awful damage scaling issues, and the only decent button you can use here is the standing three. Now, this axe kick does launch, and it has tons of pushback on block, but due to the damage scaling, the reward just isn't so good here. 
Fun fact, this stance would be given to Reiko in Armageddon, who suffered from the exact same issues. It is her second hand-to-hand -hand that you'd use the most in matches because it has far better options. In terms of single attacks, she shares the same down 4 as Tanya, but Melina's takes longer to recover, so although it's got great range and it does low profile stuff, it's not quite as overwhelming as Tanya's version. The down one is a quick low punch and that's always helpful defensively, and both back two and back two two are quick fast recovering highs that can be backdash cancelled. The absolute main button here is standing four. Another axe kick, but this one keeps the opponent grounded. 4-3 is a string that is mega plus on hit, so it will give you a free throw. But due to the plus frames and the fact that standing 4 is a mid, there's a bit of a mix-up you can enforce in down 4 and standing 4 if you want to be a bit more tricky, instead of just taking the throw. Sai is her weapon, as expected, but it is actually identical to Li Mei's weapon in Deadly Alliance, as she had the size in 3D first, which is always a bit weird to me, but oh well. Up 2 is a pretty decent launcher, as it's relatively safe, and back 3 is a quick low with decent range. It's got some strings you can use for combo enders and stuff, but 3D Mortal Kombat tends to be about that neutral game more than anything else, so these are the two key buttons you want to use. Melina, as a character, is not complicated. She has ways to get free throws, she can actually take advantage of the bugged OTG system in Deception, where ending a combo against the wall with 4-1 in the second stance will actually allow you to pick up one of her launches. It's tricky timing, but you'll know you've done it when it starts scaling like mad. And in general, the standing 4 tracks really well. In 3D games, any axe kick tends to have this good tracking, and with Melina's being as plus on hit as it is, makes it a scary button to deal with. She suffers from inconsistent hitboxes on other moves, sometimes moves will just whiff on hit if you're facing a certain direction from your opponent, but that's very much just a 3D MK thing. And sadly, the damage scaling off her first stance is a hindrance, as it limits an entire stance that you can't really use. What Melina does well is simple, but effective. As I've said countless times on this channel, you need to be fairly busted to be top tier in a 3D Mortal Kombat, so she's definitely not right up there with the broken characters, but she's not bad either. She seemed to be pretty mid-tier to a lot of 3D MK players these days. Now usually, I would talk about the changes a character received in Armageddon, but believe it or not, I don't actually have to this time around. Her main hand-to-hand -hand stance came with her in Armageddon, and it functions the exact same way. Melina as a character is identical with no new changes, and this is a rare case, but hey, at least you can automatically play Melina in two games for the price of one. In 2011, Mortal Kombat saw its big revival with Mortal Kombat 9. Every famous classic character made the roster, and of course, Melina would be playable. Funnily enough though, with the game making the mechanics more sophisticated than they'd ever been, characters generally had a lot more to them in high-level matches. The issue was, this was kind of where Melina as a character became a bit more infamous amongst players. Not really because of Melina as a character in the lore or anything, it's that her moveset would from this point start to become really nightmarish to deal with because of all the low profiling, the hitboxes and unpredictable potential players could unleash when using her. Like I said, it's no fault of the character really. Anyone could have been given this kind of playstyle and it would have been just as annoying to fight. It's just... It went to Melina, I guess. Anyway, Melina's classic game plan was fully preserved in MK9. Now you have the inclusion of enhanced moves thanks to a meter system. That playstyle became even more open than it once was. Cytos is once again a standard projectile at first glance, but you can use it in the air and use it really low to the ground. Instant air Cytos was a strong tool to have and with the enhanced version firing more than one, it can be used to establish space and keep people at further than arm's reach. Ball roll is fast, super low to the ground, and it grants a combo on hit, one of your main tools by far, because like previous games, ball roll will pick up from a lot of things into a combo. People would use it as a mid-screen tool to go under projectiles on prediction, People loved to use it as a wake-up attack because it was so fast, although very unsafe. But here's a weird thing about the roll. 
There's this universal piece of tech that a lot of teleports or anything that puts the opponent in this recovering animation where they're flipping around is actually super punishable by a full grounded combo. You just need to wait for their feet to hit the floor, right? It's super useful for getting max damage. Melina's ball roll looks like it has that animation, but it actually doesn't. You need a ball roll specific punish, which is a knowledge check against those that aren't aware. The enhanced ball roll is an overhead, so in specific situations, you can throw out an unsafe overhead where he'd otherwise go low. Tele kick works the same way it often has. However, here, you can do an air sigh after it on block or hit. On hit, this works well because if someone's hit jumping or you use it in a combo, the tele kick sigh into roll will fully combo. Super useful. Enhanced hits again on the other side. Melina gained a new move in this game, which is a simple lunge attack. It's exclusively used as a combo ender, and it restands the opponent, shutting down potential wake-ups. There is an alternate version of this if Melina connects the back two normal, but this wasn't used all that much. Normals and strings are all apparent and useful with Melina. A fair few good buttons here. Firstly, down four. This low kick is possibly the best down four in the game. It's either Melina or Sonya that has that trophy, really. This button is mad far, and it goes so low to the ground that it is insanely good at going under most moves. This move is definitely abusable, and abused it was. Up 4 launches, and it offers plus frames on block. It's amazing off a jump in, or used meaty. It tends to go hand in hand with her other ranged buttons, such as the down 4, funnily enough. Back 1-4 is a combo string, but it works on its own too, for pressure. And once again, it has good pushback. Pushback being a common theme with Melina in Mortal Kombat 9. 3-4 is a string that you'd use mid-combo, especially in the corner. Whereas 4-2 is a combo starter. You can use it on block for pressure, as you can with most attacks, but the standing 4 is one of her better buttons for punishing, and the 4-2 combos into specials, so you can get a substantial combo against most unsafe moves. Up 4 and back 1 tend to be a bit slow for this situation. Now, as an entire character, Melina is full of low profiling and really useful pushback. Her instant air size can control decent space, but it's the down 4 and everything she has in down 4 range that makes her a threat. She can really lock you down, but also has the mobility and the tools to kind of snipe you out of the air and start her game from it. She's not top 10, but she does have a lot of tools that have been used to great success in the competitive circuit. Rio used Melina to take second place at Evolution 2011 against Perfect Legend. Sonic Fox used Melina in the grand finals of Combo Breaker 2018 versus Kerbalicious after Sonya wasn't working out. This character had been seen to be successful at the highest level, but there were not a lot of Melina players able to take her to that level. The thing about this character from this point was that there became two types of Melina players. Those that were able to utilize her best moves and craft this wonderful game plan of control and frustration. And the other was the kind we'd all fought against online back in the day, who went the total opposite direction and played more reckless than anything you'd fought against up until this point. Melina could be used in a great way, but some Melina players weren't so keen on playing by the book, and her moveset in this game allowed an infuriating, and some would say random style. Offline, this wasn't so bad, but MK9's delay-based netcode made this a nightmare to deal with. All of that aside, though, Melina was tricky, effective, but due to matchups and, frankly, the existence of overwhelming top or god tiers of MK9, she was a strong high mid-tier for a lot of players. Melina would sit in the similar areas to a reptile or a sector. They weren't bad at all, but there definitely was better. Melina had the annoying factor for sure, but you had to be really good to make her work at the highest level when it's top tiers all over the shop. MKX took an interesting turn with this character because she's really had quite the journey from 2015 to even now in competitive online events. Melina's base moveset is working the same way it did in every other game, 
I've talked about ball roll, side toss and telly kick enough at this point because they again work the same way. But with MKX adding the variation system, the three variations she had allowed her to play quite differently. Let's cover these variations one by one and afterwards I want to talk about the progression this character saw in the tournament environment. Ethereal was the first one to go over and this one's really interesting. Melina gained this vanish move that would completely remove her from the screen until she reappeared. Now she can use this in various directions, but the important thing about this variation was that the meter burn version recovered much faster and even allowed for combo extensions. This attack was extremely useful because it allowed her to cancel from moves that would apply a mix up and make it much safer as she can meter burn vanish into more buttons rather than simply dedicating and being unsafe. On top of this, it was a defensive tool due to its speed and was one of the rare cases where a reversal was fully invincible, similar to a smoke evade. And as I've said before, defensive moves that are invincible and can be recovered in time for a full punish is a luxury that most of the cast do not have in the final revision. You'd see players like Samij show just how dangerous this variation can be in the many online events that took place before Injustice 2 hit the scene. Ravenous was the next and probably the least played overall. Now I do remember players like Saltface in the game's prime time showing us how it was done, before Slash Jason anyway, but this variation gets two grabs, one for general use and one that hits crouching opponents. Both of these grabs are chain grabs with two extensions for more damage, screen positioning or whatever, and it was mostly a variation used for the point blank game. It was extremely effective at being used after a poke was blocked or something. It was one of the biggest knowledge checks in the game because ravenous players would use this on block and then simply use another down one to steal a turn. It was a scary situation to deal with if you weren't sure on the frame data or when it was your turn to press a button or use armor, some kind of defensive option. Some would say this variation offered her the least, but it was still a scary character because Melina in general was scary to find. Fight. Piercing is the one that we all likely saw the most, only because of a certain UK player who brought her into the spotlight, but I'm covering that in a minute. Piercing was all about the neutral and control. Her back one two string would gain more range and threat as it was all about her size. These extra string enders, a low side toss that gained a ton of meter and it kept people locked down. It would on face value appear as the most simple variation, but it was devastating at what it could do. And that was to keep you feeling like you're stuck in the floor because one jump would be anti-aired by either a long range back one or a ball roll. So universally, Melina had some scary mix-ups. She had a number of strings with various directions and the overhead meter burn ball roll would enforce a 50-50, although extremely unsafe. But here is where the journey of Melina would change throughout the game's prime time. I'm talking the couple of years before Injustice 2 became the next main title. Melina on launch was terrible. Piercing variation was ludicrously unsafe Back one and back two were double digit punishable on block with a gap. Her meterless telly kick was unsafe on hit against characters with fast slides and stuff, so understandably, nobody used her as a neutral based character. She was seen as high risk and okay reward, but the universal opinion was you had to dedicate to the unsafe stuff because if you're unsafe anyway, you may as well go for the reward afterwards. After a few patches, however, Melina would gain more opportunities in her game plan, but at the time was still being written off as this underwhelming character who wasn't really worth using. It was at this time, during the enhanced online beta, this was where delay-based MKX netcode was being removed and replaced with a better one, that a foxy grandpa from the UK started to look at piercing after some buffs and realized that she could have been used as this neutral monster, because in this version, back one two was actually plus on block, and everything else meant that she could play this rock-solid neutral game. Now after some doubt from the community who felt they needed to see it to believe it, Foxy would use Melina to dominate the ESL Pro League in its third season, 
and even take her all the way to the World Finals, where he fell to Sonic Fox, securing second place of the year's competition. The final patch changed Melina to adjust some of that reward. Back one would actually become a high rather than a mid, and even her meter burn ball roll saw a significant change where you had to spend another bar after it connected to combo from it. Very expensive, and not something that you see much anymore, let me tell you. But Melina is still considered this incredibly strong character, and she's one of the scariest fighters in the roster. Because MKX has so many amazing characters, I don't think you'll see Melina in absolutely everybody's top 5, but it's rather commonly agreed that she is a top tier character, especially with Piercing and Ethereal, who had one hell of a competitive journey. Even beloved MKX host extraordinaire Destroyer had Ethereal and Piercing in a very high placement in his 2022 tier list. The funny thing about this final section of the episode is that we kind of have to end on a bit of an underwhelming note. Melina has been fairly strong, or top tier, in most of her appearances, but with her inclusion to the final version of MK11, which was MK11 Ultimate, after much fan demand, it has to be said, she actually came into the game as a character that many believe is underpowered. Now, there's definitely still a discussion over just how strong she actually is, but one of the main factors is that her classic game plan finally diverged from every other game for the first time in, well, ever, I suppose. Unless you count 3D Mortal Kombat, but that was a different beast for every character. Melina was used a fair bit early on in MK11 when she actually released, but she quickly dropped off and many, many players just moved on to other characters. We do have specialists to this day competing in online events like the Coliseum, Rips Arena and the like. But before we cover all of those, I'd like to go over what she does move-wise in this game, covering some key equippable moves, as remember, MK11 lets you create your own variation. First of all, the main variation that Melina players like using combines the extended strings, which you need for more hit-confirmed potential, on top of new enders to some strings, Rolling Thunder, which allows her ball roll to take off from the ground if you wish, but you can hold the button down to keep it grounded, and a Command Grab. Now this Command Grab is her armor breaker, but it only does 10% damage on hit usually. It's used for mix-up, ending combos to be closer, and to get an armor breaker if you make a good read. Melina does have some other moves which you might see every now and then. There's a Vanish, which is semi-invisibility, although it doesn't last very long. A Dash that replaces the ball roll, although don't bother, it's terrible. And this grounded Psy attack that can be used in Keep Away on occasion. There's other abilities too, but this is what I want to talk about at the end. Melina's base moves are still the classic ones. Cytos is a good projectile here, and it does hit multiple times, making it threatening at the end of a round because it will blow through last breath if the opponent is nearly out of the round, especially if you amplify it for more hits still. Telekick is here, but shockingly, you can't do Psy after it lands. The Amplify simply adds damage, and it lets you reposition. The ball roll is unfortunately just a combo tool, really. It has been used in competitive on a read of a projectile, and it can be used to cover full screen distance, but it's far slower in Mortal Kombat 11, so not as likely to work as often as it would in previous games. This role is one of her only combo tools in the entire game, perhaps the only one realistically, and it suffers from a major problem. Breakaway is MK11's way of escaping combo damage for the cost of two defensive bars, and usually, there is at least a mind game of bonus damage or something that the attacker can do if they know that you want to break. Unfortunately with Melina, you can break after her roll 100% of the time before Amplify comes out, which lets her combo. She can't roll and do something else if she thinks you'll break. You'll get out of this for free, and because ball roll has to be the combo opener, the damage you deal is laughable. Now, before I get too hung up on the negatives, I do want to mention the stuff that she can do well. Because it's not all terrible, 
I also want to thank Hella Larry for answering some questions as a super high level Melina player in a game that doesn't have many competitors using the character in events. Her movement is good, particularly backwards movement. It allows her to play a dry game because her Cytos is so powerful. So in matchups where you have the full screen edge, Melina can do some damage here. With the command grab equipped, her strike throw game is quite potent, especially as one of her throws has a KB attached, which unfortunately I can't show because, you know, YouTube. She doesn't seem to have the most lopsided matchups in the world, although characters like Cetrion, Raiden, and Geras are said to shut down what she wants to do in a matchup, there are other characters that will have a generally tougher time advancing in, as movement in this game can be a bit all over the place. When it comes to tier list placement, many players believe her to be on the weaker side, and some specific Melina players out there have said that they think she's better than people give her credit for, but the biggest issue she has in the game is that she just doesn't have much legacy tools for a character that's existed since 1993. Now, Melina's always been a hot topic for discussion over how good people think she actually is, and truthfully, I've never really been able to see a concrete answer or a concrete theory as to why this could be the case. However, I do have some theories of my own. What I mean by this, and considering I've spent the past couple of weeks working on this video and playing across two decades of the character to get this thing together, is that with all of the universal tools that Melina could do from game to game, they just do not seem to exist in MK11, and she's a lot more limited as a character because of it. Let's go over what I mean here, and hopefully I'm making sense. Melina needs the role for basically every combo, but what if you could use Air Psy to combo instead? She has a string that has her jumping off the ground, right? So is it possible? No. You want Air Psy and Air Tele Kick to retain some classic gameplay? I mean, you can take both, but they don't really work together. Even with Air Psy equipped, you still can't use this move after a Tele Kick, so it's rather pointless, really. You want to take the low side to retain a bit of previous MKX experience? You can have it, sure, because it's an equippable ability, but it clashes with the regular Psy, so sadly, you can't have both. And if you want to take low Psy and air Psy, that is two separate abilities just for the projectile game on its own. The biggest issue, in my opinion, is that for the first time in almost ever, with the exception of 3D, Melina's gameplay design was altered, and she simply doesn't have the creativity she perhaps should have had in her current playable version. You do see Melina players few and far between in competitive events, but she'll end her time in MK11 perhaps lacking that extra bit of creativity that Melina players had grown used to for the past few installments. One of the biggest problems is that you have to put so many abilities together just to have a slight idea of classic Melina, and even then, you're still a lot more limited than you would be playing something else. And just like that, it's time to close things out. This was the competitive history of Melina. It has been long requested, so I do hope that this video was worth the wait. And speaking of waiting, I want to thank everyone once again for your patience with me over the last few months. Hardware issues really were a severe problem for me, and thankfully, I'm now back on track and ready to continue what I was doing before. So take care, everyone. I want to thank everyone that is continuing to support the Patreon. See you later, and I suppose I'll see you in the next video, won't I?